The man who turned in the greatest pitching performance in World Series history, Tom Glavin. Three minutes. Here we go. Um, first of all, uh, uh, thank you to the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame for this great honor. Uh, I'm certainly honored and humbled to be a part uh, of this great um, uh, Hall of Fame. I want to congratulate my uh, fellow 2021 class inductees. Uh, um, I tell you what, there's uh, there's a wealth of greatness in this class from uh, all different walks of life, different sports, different avenues that uh, that guys cover sports in. Um, and it's a pleasure to go in with all you guys. I appreciate and respect all that you have done in the world of sports. Uh, I would like to thank my wife, Chris, uh, my son, Keenan, who was here tonight. Uh, most of our other kids are scattered here, there, and everywhere across the country, so they could not be here. But um, as Tony mentioned, uh, it takes a village. And uh, most of the time that I was playing, uh, my wife was essentially a single mother while the baseball season went on. I don't know how she did it. I don't want to know how she did it, but she did it. And it made my job way easier knowing that I had that at home. So she has always been my rock. So, honey, thank you. Uh, certainly want to thank my parents um, for all their love and support. Um, you know, they were so instrumental in my success. Um, but in a very simplistic way. They supported me, they took me where I needed to go, um, but were always uh, very quick to remind me that there were a lot of great athletes in the world. Uh, I think the three best things that my dad ever, t ever told me was first, when I was a young kid and I had a bad hockey game, I got in the car and I was kind of a little snot when I was in the car, and he pulled the car over and he said, son, you're going to go into the locker room with a smile on your face, and you're going to come out with a smile on your face, or I'm not taking you anymore. So that taught me to learn how to enjoy the game and leave it there when it was over, which served me very well later in life when I was a husband and a parent. Uh, second thing he told me was, there are going to be a lot of people that are going to tell you what to do as I was going off to play professional ball. And he said, it doesn't cost you anything to listen to anybody, but it's up to you to figure out what works for you. And that could not have been truer. There were a lot of people along the way that gave me advice, some good, some bad. But I was ultimately the one responsible for figuring out what worked for me. And the last thing, which he denies to this day, um, but I remember him telling me at one point in time, there are 100 kids in Florida and Georgia alone that are better baseball players than you, so you better be ready. He doesn't quite think he told me that, but I know he did, and I think his reason for telling me that was there were going to be a lot of good players. But the one thing I could control was my effort, and don't let people outwork you. And I would venture to say that everybody in this class that I'm going in with tonight had the same attitude. They weren't going to get outworked. We may not have always been the most talented, but we could control how hard we worked, and we weren't going to be outworked. So I thank you for the honor tonight. Um, as a kid from Massachusetts, I just wanted to come down here and play for the Braves. I didn't know who much about the Braves then other than Dale Murphy and Hank, and Hank Aaron. But I'm sure glad I did. I'm sure glad I came down here. And this, this great state has been a big part of my life. It's become my second home. My kids have all been raised here. And I'm, I'm thrilled to have had the opportunity to make my mark with the Atlanta Braves and ultimately end up in the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. So thank you very much.